Hello everybody and welcome back to Rainbow Crafts. My name is Colton and today Zach will be showing you how we make our Summer Sangria Soap. This soap is a custom fragrance blend that has all of the different fruits and scents that you would expect in a sangria, but instead of drinking it, you use it to wash your body. So stay tuned and watch how we make this delicious Summer Sangria Soap. Zach is going to steer the soap ship today, but we're gonna do most of the same steps that we always do, so this is gonna look really familiar to you. We'll start out by adding our lye water solution, which is at about 115, 120 degrees Fahrenheit into our custom signature oil blend. We'll then blend that up really quick with the stick blender and add in the colloidal oatmeal slurry. Pass that through the strainer there to get out any lumps and clumps, and then whisk that in really quickly as well, just to make sure it is well distributed in that soap batter. Then we'll add in our fragrance blend. This is a custom blend of red raspberry, pink grapefruit, sparkling mojito, and hot pink lime. And then the red color comes from rose clay, which we'll use as one of the two colorants today. This soap was inspired by one of our favorite summertime drinks, which is a sangria. Um, normally we like to use white wine or rosé. In our sangria, we don't usually use the like red wine in it. But this is inspired by all of the kind of fruity flavors to give you that summer feeling. Zach is then going to pour out about half to three quarters of the soap batter and then he'll be putting in some merlot mica which is suspended in some of the soap base oil and whisk that in really quickly into that soap base we want to kind of embody the color palette of red wine of sangria so berry red uh peachy tones all of that kind of that kind of feeling then Zach will be pouring off the remainder of that soap batter into the slab mold. The bottom layer was, we let it set for a little bit of time, maybe a minute or so, just so we got a nice crisp line. We'll scrape out that container, get out all of that soap batter because we won't be coming back to it. I do apologize if you hear any clanging in the background. The neighbors are having their bathroom renovated and the plumber is, I don't know, banging on something over there. We are then going to use the hanger swirl tool to do some really quick swoops in that soap batter to bring that lighter red color up to that darker berry red color to give it a really cool like wave technique and then Zach will go in and make three lines again with that Merlot mica from Brambleberry which we love so much we when we're looking for a nice kind of maroony color that's what we reach for this Soap is kind of the kickoff for the summer season for us. We will start off July strong with our our um, Citrus in July, which is one of our most popular fan favorite months. We do tons of fun citrusy soaps, which actually I'm going to start making those soaps tonight. Today is May 31st, so we're basically a month ahead. Then Zach will be taking his chopstick there and doing some horizontal lines through the top of the soap batter, not going too deep into that soap batter. We don't want to disturb the lower colored section with the upper colored section. We want to keep those lines pretty much intact, but we're kind of just wanting to spread out that mica just a tad to get that across as much of that top surface as possible. We 
had originally intended to use wine in the soap base, which we still might do. We realized after preparing the wine that we had gotten that it wasn't vegan, and so we didn't want to use that. I'm just happy we caught it before we actually made the soap because that kind of really would have not been a fun time to have gone to all the effort and then only to realize it wasn't vegan yet. We were gifted the wine, uh, so it wasn't like we wasted any money ourselves. Zach went in and did some spoon swoops and then just spritzed some rubbing alcohol on there and tucked that soap away for 24 hours. One nice thing, especially when it's warmer out, is that we don't have to worry so much about soda ash, at least where we live in the winter months especially. We tuck our soap away, literally we cover it with blankets and we tuck them, tuck all of the soap molds away so they stay nice and warm because if we don't do that for some reason the tops just always get soda ash no matter how careful we are with water with um, blending with all of the things that you normally would do to prevent that soda ash i think it might just be that our house that we live in um, doesn't have central heating so each room is kind of controlled by its own little wall heater thing and the soap curing space is by the back door and so when we let the dogs out they the cold air just gets in so we'll break this soap slab up into soap loaves and you can kind of get a a hint at the soupy lines there. This soap turned out really pretty. We'll definitely have to copy this again color combo but also technique wise. And then we will break out Dorothy, our multi-bar soap cutter, get the bar centered between those cut lines, and then do our first soap slice here. I can't say the praises enough of this soap cutter. It is just made the, a world of difference in our soap production and the efficiency which we're always looking to increase efficiency especially the more we ramp up production for a small team like ours which is two people And just like that, we are about done slicing up our summer sangria soap. This soap will definitely go fast just based on the bright citrusy notes, but kind of fruitiness as well. So grab yours while you can online and in person at rainbowcrafts.com. This will be a mid-June or July 1st launch. I'm not 100% so sure. So watch our Instagram for that. If you want to support the team and get a shout out just like our newest supporter Jen C there, check out our subscription page on our website. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see what Rainbow Crafts comes up with next. Bye.